In this video, we're going to look at Canadian Tire, which is located in Toronto, Ontario. And what I do in my videos is I try to figure out the actual stock price of the company using prior financial information and also looking at their capital structure. We also look at the financial ratios of the company and compare them to similar companies in the same industry. So let's get started with the model. This company has a market cap of 7.4 billion Canadian dollars. So we'll put that into the model. And then they are trading at 116.28. So if you wanted to buy a share, it's 116 Canadian dollars. Next, we're going to pull the free cash flow. And free cash flow is the cash that's remaining after all cash expenses. If you look on the income statement, you see a lot of non-cash items. So that's excluded from free cash flow. This is actual cash. And that's how you run a business with cash. Next, we're going to pull the net income, which is the profit and loss according to the income statement. And this is accounting profit and loss. So there are some accounting things involved in here that don't affect free cash flow. And now we're going to pull the revenue, which are the sales for the company. So let's look at the numbers. They all look pretty good. Every year they have a profit margin of 5%. That means 5% of their revenue is converted into net income. Let's look at a capital structure of the business so we can figure out the discount rate we need to apply to the future cash flows. They pay $161 million of interest on their debt. Let's go to the balance sheet to see how much debt they have. We'll go to liability section. And current debt is 1.5 billion. That's debt due within one year. And then long-term debt of 4 billion. That's debt due after one year. So they pay 2.9% interest on the debt. Interest payments are tax deductible. So let's go back to the income statement to figure out their effective tax rate. So the income before tax is $1 billion. And the income taxes they pay is $285 million. So the cost of debt is 2.1%. Now to get the cost of equity, we need the beta. And that's how much the stock moves relative to the entire market. So if the stock had a beta of 1, that means it would move with the market. So the stock moves about one and a half times what the market does. Now let's get some more information from the balance sheet because we need to look at their ratios later. So we need their current assets. And these are assets which can be liquidated into cash within 12 months. And they include cash accounts receivables and inventory. And that's $9.3 billion. And then the current liabilities, these are debts and payables, which are due within 12 months. That's $5.3 billion. We also need their equity. That's the value of the company according to the balance sheet. It's assets minus liabilities, $4.4 billion. And next, we're going to get their EBIT, earnings before interest and taxes. On the income statement, they call that operating income, $1.27 billion. So now let's look at the entire capital structure. The cost of debt is 2.1% and they have 56% debt. And the cost of equity is 13.2% and they have 44% of equity. So to get the WAC, it's a blend of the cost of debt and the cost of equity. And that comes at the 7%. And that's the discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. So we estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also did a terminal value, which is all years past year four. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. And we get a value for the company of $4.9 billion. We divide that by 64 million shares. And I calculate the stock price is $76. So that's what I say the stock is actually worth, according to my model. But it's trading at 116 so it's trading at a 52 percent premium let's see what simply wall street says the stock is worth they're in the opposite direction i'm usually not so far off with simply wall street but they're valuing the company at 400 canadian dollars so they're saying it's really undervalued the stock and i'm not sure what they built into their model to get this value but as you can see 
the free cash flows are pretty consistent. My expectations are actually higher than what they've done in the past, and I'm still below the trading price. So simply Wall Street is building something else into its model to forecast an extreme increase in free cash flows in the future to get that value. Let's look at the historical stock price. And it looks like it traded at 160, 170 at some points. The stock has come down in March, but it's come back up, not to where it was pre-coronavirus, but it's getting close. It sits around 120. So let's look at the financial ratios. They have a good PE, 10.6. I like to see under 15. This is price of stock over earnings per share. A great price of sales, that's price of stock over sales per share. Investors are willing to pay 50 cents for $1 of sales. Price to book of 1.7, that's price of stock over book value per share. That's also pretty good. Current ratio of 1.8, that's current assets over current liabilities so they can easily cover their current debts. ROE is 16%, that's okay. That's income over equity. Interest coverage ratio of eight, so they can cover their interest expense eight times. So the best way to look at ratios is to compare them to similar companies. These three companies are in the same industry, specialty retail, Williams Sonoma, Office Depot, and Canadian Tire. Canadian Tire has the best PE at 10.6. The average of the three is 13.7. Canadian Tire is also better than the average in price of sales. They're better than the average in price to book and better than the average in current ratio. They're about average in ROE at 16% and the average is also 16%. Debt, they're a little higher than average. They have the most debt of three companies, but they're not too leveraged. 56% isn't too bad. William Sonoma has the largest market cap because Canadian Tire is in Canadian dollars. And if you convert that to US dollars, it's below William Sonoma's 6,500. So let me know what you think of the video. Thanks for watching.